What's the president's reaction to the growing number of suggestions, both in this book and in the media, that he's un mentally unfit uh, to serve as president? Uh, the same way we have when it's been asked before, that it's disgraceful and laughable. Next week, when he goes uh, to his uh, physical, are there mental acuity tests that go along with that, or is it purely physical in nature? We'll discuss, as I said, uh, when I announced that he was going to be doing the physical. We'll have a readout of that after the, that is completed, and we'll let you know at that time. That isn't a no. The White House fielded questions today about the president's mental fitness for office after scathing accounts of Donald Trump's competence were reported in that new book, Fire and Fury, by Michael Wolff. In it, he writes, quote, Trump didn't read. He didn't even skim. If it was print, it might as well not exist. Some believe that for all practical purposes, he was no more than semi-literate. Adding to that, in an article Wolf penned today for The Hollywood Reporter, he writes, quote, Trump was, in words used by almost every member of the senior staff on repeated occasions, like a child. Jonathan Lemire and David Jolly are back with me. And a reminder to our viewers, some of the people quoted in Wolf's book have pushed back on his accounts. Um, this has been the narrative today, Jonathan, mm -hmm. that the president... And frankly, for the past week, and, and you could say, argue, it goes back much farther than that. The president is not mentally fit for the White House. Take a look at what he tweets. Take a look at the at the transcripts of his interviews and how he goes back and forth between topics and can't seem uh, to hold a thread. There are a lot of questions about this. Members of Congress are meeting with a psychiatrist to talk about warning signs. You hear conversations. I have sources who ask me if he's lost a step, if I think he has lost a step. Sources who have known Donald Trump for years who have worked in the White House. I think there's no question that what we're seeing is this is going to be a pretty major storyline for 2018, is the president's mental ability and, and capacity to have this job. Now, certainly, I'm not in a position to diagnose him one way or the other, but I think it must be said he is sort of staffed differently than other presidents. It is well known that he has a pretty shaky grasp of policy details. It's well known that he has a pretty short attention span. So when aides come to him, they do it in ways they think will connect to him. They'll do it with briefings that are largely oral rather than reading. Or if there is reading, it's maps or it's the documents that has his name in it a lot, knowing that will draw his eyes, and he'll be more likely to lock in on a conversation. But he is someone whose scattershot approach, let's say, for the Republican health care initiative back last spring, a lot of Republicans on the Hill blame the president for in part for its failure, that he wasn't able to stick with one way or the other. And they think that he, the fact that he took a little more of a backseat role on taxes actually helped that get through. But I do think you're seeing, I mean, you saw it in the briefing today, those questions are going to continue. But it must be added. The president himself sort of made an appearance in the briefing room today yeah. by video. What Even was that? though the Oval Office is only 30 yards or so down the way, he has never once set foot in the briefing room to field questions from reporters. And we're seeing this, though he certainly does take questions from time to time, like on the lawn before he goes to Marine One. He's only had one full-fledged press conference since taking office. And all of his TV interviews, where you might have an in-depth one-on-one with a lot of follow-up questions, have been with friendly Fox News answers from uh, Fox News anchors for months. There's a lot, another anecdote that Michael Wolf points out um, that I believe is in the book is also in the Hollywood Reporter article that, that uh, Michael Wolf wrote today about Hope Hicks putting the um, kibosh on an interview with 60 Minutes because uh, she was afraid that he was rambling. Uh, and, and repeating himself over and over and over again. Um, again, that's from Michael Wolf. The book is full of gossipy details. Yes, David. Uh, but the thread throughout it is all about Donald Trump's sure. mental acuity, Donald Trump's sanity, Donald Trump's ability to lead, his ability to take in information, to process the information, and then to go out and act on it. Is it alarmist for people to seize on this? Is this too much. If, if critics are going to come out and say, we're all making a big deal out of this, what would you say to those critics? It, I, I alarm is sure, but more importantly, it's, it's a grave conversation to have as a nation. You know, in law, there's a principle called uh, res ipsa loquitur, the facts speak for themselves. The fact that our nation is having a conversation, a national conversation, about whether or not our president is fit to serve, whether he has the capacity to serve, that speaks for itself. That suggests that the president does not reach the bar that the American people have set for the fitness of a president. And this is very grave because it's different than politics. You know, I was a Republican member of Congress, disagreed a lot with 
President Obama. There were some things we agreed on. There were some things we disagreed. At times, angrily disagreed. But I never questioned his fitness. I never questioned his intellect, his capacity, his morality, his integrity. In fact, the contrast you can draw right now between the lack of capacity of Donald Trump and what we saw in, in Barack Obama, a decent gentleman who was fully capable of carrying out the executive office authority of the presidency, that contrast alone suggests the facts speak for themselves. The president likely does not reach the bar of fitness that's been set by the American people.